Where'd you get it from anyway? Apparently it was the hand of someone who could connect with the dead. I heard it was the hand of a Satanist. Yeah. And the other hand's just out there. Welcome back to another Coco Telenoir. Today, I'm so excited to be joined by Samoan actor Chris Alosil. You may recognize him from Netflix's Surviving Summer or seeing his name attached to films like The Next Goal Win. He is now starring in the highly anticipated horror film Talk To Me, which comes out in New Zealand July 27th. Well, first off, I want to say a huge congratulations on the praise and success of Talk To Me. Um, it seems like it's already received so much, even though um, it hasn't been out for, for too long. Um, and for some places, it hasn't been out at all. Mm -mm. And so yeah. um, for you. those who haven't heard about it, what is Talk To Me about? Um, so Talk To Me is about a group of teenagers who come across an embalmed hand. Um, and this hand acts as a gateway to the spirit world um, that allows them to speak to spirits and also let the spirits in. Now, if you grab the hand and say, talk to me, you see the spirit and you say, I let you in. And the spirit goes inside like a Maya equal sort of thing. And, um, and, but you only can leave it in for 90 seconds. Otherwise they stay inside you and take over your body. Um, and, Without saying too much, one of the friends gets hooked on it. Um, they, this group of teenagers uses the hand like a drug um, at parties. And um, yeah, one of the teens get hooked on it and all hell breaks loose. Yeah, I won't, I won't say too much, I won't say too much. I know that's a perfect explanation about giving too much. In the summary for Samoans, it's basically a movie about Ma'iaiku. Yeah, 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 pretty much. Yeah, Ma'iaiku, but it's a Ma'i that you want. <laughs> that teenagers are like, oh, yeah, it's, you know, it's a, it's a thrill. Like, um, it's something that we can get high off, per se. You know, and um, yeah, it's a bit of a commentary on, um, you know, party culture, teen culture today, um, and also um, social media, um, they use this at parties and then, you know, record their mates and, and post it up on their TikToks and Snapchats and whatnot. So, yeah, yeah, um, um, it's an awesome movie that sort of, uh, Gen Z, today's generation will be able to look at and say, this is a movie for us, you know, um, so yeah. Yeah. yeah, it definitely feels like a movie of the time and it's quite mm. it's iconic in the sense that it's director Danny and Michael's debut future, um, feature, but it's also kind of like this aspiring um, story of creatives who came from YouTube and from like the mm. digital creation space and found this streamline straight into um, their first feature becoming a cinematic release, right? Um, uh, how did you become a part of this epic project? Uh, yeah, so the brief got put on my table a couple couple years back. Um, I was actually briefed to play a different character and then they came back about a year later when shoot got pushed. Um, and they had a character for me that they based on... So these guys grew up in Adelaide in Australia and, um, you know, as you do, there's a lot of Samoans that come over from New Zealand. And they, they've got, um, and that was their best mates, people who raised them as well, um, kept them out of trouble. And that's who they kind of based my character off in the end, um, which was awesome because in sort of mainstream horror, especially um, like, you know, we've got our horrors in, in New Zealand, you know, like Tenisa, The Tattooist, um, what's another one? Um, a Thousand Ropes. Yeah. That's, that's an awesome one. Um, but, um, yeah, I was kind of going, where does a Samoan fit into this kind of movie? Um, if you look at our cast, we're very spread across um, how Australia kind of sits today, um, which was awesome because, yeah, New Zealand Samoans are a big part of Australian society. And, you know, by the horror, I think that um, this could easily be a uh, like a teen drama. Um, and, you know, has every facet of what Australia looks like today. Because um, it's very different to, you know, beaches and desert, which is what you kind of get in your um, sort of run-of-the-mill Australian film. The, the thing I love about this film is, like, it's an Australian movie, but it's got nothing to do with the beach or desert. Um, mm -hmm. And it's a very fresh take on 
um, what Aussie looks like and also horror movies in general, um, which which was really refreshing to be a part of. And yeah, man, Danny and Mikey, I, I had heard of them before. Um, I had kind of like flipped across their videos on, on Facebook, you know, um, and you could tell that these guys, they, they have a knack for filmmaking. But um, so it was the question when we were filming was, you know, you put a bit of budget in front of these guys, what can they do with it? And they've yeah, taken it to the highest level possible. And I can just, yeah, I'm just proud of them. And they, yeah, they're about to take over me. Yeah, so, um, yeah. That's amazing. Um, mm. And it was, you were also part of Sundance Film Festival. I saw Yeah, that. yeah. So we, we, yeah, we took it to Sundance in, in January. And um, yeah, we, for us, we were just, we were just really grateful to be there. You know, it's um, a very prestigious festival and, um, we sh showed up to the festival and we're like, you know what, let's just, let's just be ourselves. Let's be loud, just how we were on shoot. Um, and if the film doesn't resonate then we walk out just as loud, but luckily for us, the film hit. So, um, yeah, it was, and yeah, it was pretty surreal to be around, um, a lot of names that, you know, I kind of only read about in the library growing up. Um, and yeah, just to be there rubbing shoulders with those guys for me was a moment where I was like, um, I'm where I'm meant to be. And um, for this film to resonate with that audience as well, uh, you know, America is such a um, a big kettle of fish. So for us to take one there and and for it to be, you know, people to take a liking to it was, was massive. Um, the pressure on sort of Australian, New Zealand film as well was like, a lot of the time you can feel that they want to cater to an American audience. Um, and so we kind of do some things in an American way, but the thing I love about the record boys is um, they're very proud Australians um, and they're very proud to be where they're from. And they're like, you know what, this is us and we're going to be us. And if you don't like it, that's your problem. Um, but luckily people, some people liked it. So I think a <laughs> yeah. lot of people liked it. <laughs> people like a24 um, yeah 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 that was crazy yeah it was um especially a24 with the streak that they're on at the moment um for us to for them to um hook our film yeah it's just surreal surreal it's just none of it felt real i was just like oh shucks so i walked away from that festival going you know what like i'm just a kid from wellington man you know like I uh, love my high school, play my club, club footy on the weekends, go to church on Sundays. Um, you know, you never think that that stuff is within your reach. Um, but yeah, I walked away from that festival going, man, anything is possible, you know. Um, and yeah, God's plan, man. It was, Absolutely. It was awesome. If you think of the, this, I guess, new generation of horror, um, mm. you, you think of movies like Midsommar, right? And you think of mm. Pew's um, mm. performance in a movie like Midsommar, which was an A24 um, picked mm. up movie. And then now we have Talk To Me. And now we know that this generation will be looking at someone like Chris's um, performance <laughs> in Talk To oh, Me. Sex. Oh, sex. How does uh, that feel? Uh, no, you, you're, you're put up right against these movies, right? Um, because you're put in the same production, in the same roster that A24 picks up in the standards in which they pick up movies. How does that feel for you to be amongst those big names? Yeah, it's, it's yeah, like I said, man, it's it's surreal. It's, um, and you kind of, you know, in the short time that I've been in the industry of, and I come to learn, you just, um, I, when I was, when I first came in, I was like, man, I really want to, prove how good an actor I am I want to show you know like that I can um punch at the level that um a lot of people say that I can't and but um as time's gone on I've just you know really grown a love for the craft and I find that um a lot of the big names that I've come across are the most you know down-to-earth people um people who are not in it for you know fame or money but just pure love of the craft and um and yeah, and you, you just want to kind of meet meet them at their level, you know, and go, yeah, like uh, not in it for anything else, but to, uh, you know, move my audiences and help to comment on what's going on at the moment, you know. And I think this film does that as well. And 
yeah, but it's just just grateful, grateful, nonetheless, man. Um, you know, I know I'm very lucky to be in the position that I'm in. So I'm um, just not taking it for granted, and obviously a lot more work left to do. Yeah. Um, Repping your your craft and your family and your community. Uh, what village are you from? Uh, uh so my dad's from Levi, Salimo. Yeah. And um, my mom's from Falefa, um, in Anuamaa. Well, I'm yeah. sure you're making them all proud. Um, what's next for you? More hard. Uh, uh, pardon? More hard. Uh, no. Uh, uh, so uh, we're just gearing up for a feature at the moment, um, and yeah, it's a feature based in a prison. Um, I'll say that much. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah. It'll be fun. Um, but yeah, horror movie. I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, horrors are cool. I, I didn't really like horrors growing up. Like, um, I yeah, couldn't really justify, yeah, like uh, paying to be scared. I can be scared, you know, I just go home and talk to my mum and dad. <laughs> so I go home late, but um, yeah. But but luckily, uh, like you said, this is more than a horror. It's a, yeah, it's a yeah. coming of age, it's a social mm -hmm. commentary on like social media culture. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and it's, it's a fun, fun thriller as well like um you know it has it's horror tropes but it's yeah it's something that i I've, i feel it um is underrated in the way where um it's just really fun man like you know you you want to be at these parties with these people and and you know wouldn't be surprised if a lot of our audiences want to try the hand themselves <laughs> maybe well i can't wait for more people to watch it and before i let you go i thought we'd play a quick round of this or that this or that? Alright, I got you. This or that? So if you choose. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Galo or Fai? Galo. Galo, okay. Galo. City life or village life? Ooh. Village life. Village life. I'm thinking about the long term here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Instagram or TikTok? Oh, Instagram. I don't have a TikTok. But um, yeah, I probably should get on it. But it looks like you could scroll for hours on there, hey? Yeah, it's dangerous. Dangerous. Yeah. A day of fishing or a day out in the plantation? Oh, a day of fishing. A day of fishing, man. A few beers in the cooler. The boys can't beat it. Union or league? Oh, union. I'm from New Zealand. I'm from Wellington. That is the correct answer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, horror films or village tenisa tales? Village tenisa tales, baby. All the way. Okay. Wow. That's oh, and horror uh... films. And horror films, too. And then Listen. maybe like a cross. Yeah, 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 I feel that. Could be. Well, thank you so much, Chris, for your time. I don't want to take up too much. I know you have interviews after this. I got you. Appreciate that so much. Um, mm. Appreciate the chat as well.